I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, a violent insurrectionist who was convicted by a jury back in August for trespassing in the Capitol. He was smoking weed in the Capitol, bragging and taking selfies. He was wearing a bulletproof vest and trespassed on two separate occasions during the January 6th insurrection. He's now begging the judge for leniency in federal court in Washington, D.C., as his sentencing is approaching. He's saying, I did what I did was wrong and I've humiliated my family. I'm going to read for you this letter that this insurrectionist, his name is Eric Herrera. He claimed to be a journalist, but he like got a Amazon uh, $8 badge of a fake press credential that he was also like telling people, hey, this is a way you could go and invade the Capitol. Just use these fake credentials, basically. But he claims that he was just oh, swept up in the uh, motions of what was taking place on January 6th. Complete BS. But in this letter, he's begging Judge Beryl Howell, the federal judge overseeing his case for leniency, because the federal government is now seeking about seven years in prison for this violent insurrectionist, Eric Herrera. And mind you, Eric Carrera went to trial. He forced the Department of Justice to bring this case to trial, despite the fact that there are selfies of him and videos of him everywhere. There's two videos of him trespassing in. He's seen messing up the parliamentarian's office and like causing damage and taking and taking papers and throwing it everywhere. And so anyway, let me read for you what uh, Eric Herrera's letter to Judge Beryl Howell is begging the judge for leniency now that he approaches his sentencing. Your Honor, I still have no idea why I behaved in the manner I did at the Capitol on January 6th. I became swept up in the emotions of what was happening around me. Even though I have photographed many protests and rallies before, I had never found myself in a situation like January 6th in my entire life. I still cannot understand how that many people ended up on the Capitol grounds that day to cause damage and violence. Nonetheless, my actions were unacceptable, and I won't try to defend them. I feel beyond awful for what I have done, and I am regretful. Judge Howell, when the trial started and people were saying they cannot be fair jurors for me because of their experience with January 6th, I remember you told me to pay attention to their experiences because I might learn something about what my actions caused. I did pay attention, and hearing people talk about their experiences that day made me feel awful. I want to apologize to all police officers who were at the Capitol that day and had to put down the disruption, some of them even getting hurt in the process. Hearing them testify about their experiences made me realize how I added to the difficult situation by being there. I wish I could go back and undo my decisions. Aside from behaving completely unprofessional, I also brought great shame to my country and an unimaginable level of stress to my family. Not only have I tarnished my name for the unforeseeable future, my actions made things increasingly difficult for my hardworking parents. I was not home on the day I was to be arrested because I was working on a documentary. Okay, first off, he says for behaving completely unprofessional, that shows that you're not accountable, okay? It wasn't that you acted unprofessionally, which you did. You acted like a terrorist. You acted like a traitor. And if you want to actually take accountability, if you're trying to beg for leniency from the federal judge, why not recognize that your conduct was the conduct of a traitor? Not that you simply made this situation more difficult for officers. No, that you tried to actually kill the officers, that you were part of an insurrection where one officer died and other officers were severely injured. That's the way if you want to actually take accountability, that's what you could do. And you go, I don't know how it happened. I was swept up into it. I was just a journalist there. No, you weren't. You were a violent insurrectionist who was engaged in some heinous and despicable conduct. You were wearing a bulletproof vest. You helped trash the Senate parliamentarian office. You stole and drank booze, smoked marijuana inside, and then you wanted to take an FU photograph selfie 
And even with all of the evidence on the surveillance footage, on all of the video footage out there, and you putting yourself out there as an insurrectionist, you still brought this to trial. You still made the Department of Justice bring this case before a jury where you were swiftly convicted. And now the government's seeking about seven years. And so now you write that letter. I hope Judge Beryl Howell sentences you to the max. I think you'll probably get slightly less than seven years, but I hope you do at least more than five years and as close to six years as possible. I want to read from the Department of Justice's press release following the conviction um, back in August where Eric Herrera was convicted. It's California man found guilty by jury of charges related to the Capitol breach. Eric Herrera, 34 of California, was found guilty by a jury in the District of Columbia today of felony and misdemeanor charges for his actions during the January 6, 2021 Capitol breach. The jury found Herrera guilty of felony offense of obstruction of an official proceeding and four misdemeanor offenses, including entering and remaining in a restricting building or grounds, disorderly and disruptive conduct in the Capitol building, disorderly conduct in the Capitol building and parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building. The trial was before Judge Beryl Howell in Washington, D.C. According to the government's evidence, Herrera was among the rioters who illegally entered the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Among other places, he was in groups that entered the Capitol at the Senate fire door and the Senate wing door. He also posted a photograph of himself holding papers inside the Senate parliamentarian's office. Herrera is a photographer, photographer, but was not in the Capitol as a credentialed journalist. On January 7, 2021, he admitted on social media that a press patch he was wearing had not been issued by a media organization. He wrote, quote, I don't have a monopoly on press badges. They're on Amazon for like $8, no special permission to buy. Herrera was arrested on August 19th, 2021 in LA, and he is set to be sentenced soon. And so ultimately, um, the sentencing is going to take place. I certainly hope that Herrera will be sentenced to the max there. Here, I'll, I'll pull up this as well from the uh, sentencing memorandum. You can see this photo where Herrera is clearly shown. In the sentencing memorandum, it talks about how Herrera took a bottle of alcohol that was not his, carried it with him as police officers, ordered everyone in that location to leave, and hoisted it up in triumph while making a fist-pumping motion as he was kicked out of the Capitol building, a screenshot of Herrera raising the stolen bottle of alcohol is included. So now after all of that evidence, after the government seeking about uh, seven years, about up to 87 months, you now are begging the judge, but it's obvious that you're not really sorry for what you did. It's obvious that you have no uh, accountability. You're taking no accountability at all. And I just go through that statement of the things that you talk about. And while you say your actions were unacceptable and you won't try to defend them, you proceed by saying that you photographed many protests and rallies before, but were somehow in this one swept up in the emotions. That sounds exactly like you are trying to defend your despicable actions. And then your very notion of the trial, where you talk here about the federal judge, Judge Beryl Howell, when the trial started and people were saying they cannot be fair for me. I remember you told me to pay attention. Judge Beryl Howell was telling you to pay attention so you realized the severity of your actions, not so that you could go through a trial so that you can put forward your phony defenses, waste the jury's time, waste the court's time, waste the Department of Justice's resources when they have clear evidence that you are a traitor to America, you are a violent insurrectionist, so a jury could find you guilty, so then you write this letter where you don't even take accountability for yourself seriously. Seriously, shame on you. Let me tell you what you are and who you are. You are a traitor. You are a coward. And I hope that you are sentenced to the max. And frankly, 
I don't think the sentence is strong enough, if I'm being completely honest here. I think the entire rubric of sentencing for these insurrectionists is not equipped to do the job of what actually took place on January 6th. And look, our laws, unfortunately, did not reflect the event that there would be a violent insurrection. So the Department of Justice has to utilize sentencing guidelines as well as certain charges which don't necessarily or didn't necessarily anticipate the type of despicable conduct that ultimately took place. And so I think there should be sentencing minimums for these insurrectionists. I mean, there's mandatory minimums for other things that have put away people who don't deserve to be in jail for the rest of their life, for the rest of their life, um, for nonviolent offenses, that is. Here, for these violent offenses, we're not talking about nonviolent drug offenses with mandatory minimums that have disproportionately targeted black and brown Americans by far. Here, we're talking about violent conduct by these insurrectionists to try to overthrow our democracy and the existing sentencing guidelines based on the laws that we have only sentences these people to like six or seven years, granted for seditious conspiracy and when you add some of these other charges, which is not the case with Eric Herrera, but is, for example, with the Oath Keepers, then maybe you're talking 20, 30 years, but there really hasn't been a sentence yet that's been longer than 20 years in prison. And frankly, I think that the sentencing here should be 50 years. I mean, I think it should be at least over 20 years. You engage in a violent insurrection at a minimum. I think it should be 20 years and the maximum, maybe it's 50 years. If you try to overthrow our democracy, if you engage in acts of treason like that, people shouldn't be getting away with two years or three years. Granted, the toolkit that the Department of Justice has and the pre-existing sentencing guidelines are such that they really can't deviate from it. But that's why we need more robust laws to deal with this and address this. Obviously, the Republicans aren't going to support it because they support insurrection. But I think this is an area that the Democrats and pro-democracy supporting people should put forward legislation to make the mandatory minimums for insurrection to be at least 20 years. That's my view of the situation. What's yours? I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit the subscribe button. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers thanks to your support. And in addition, check us out at Patreon dot com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch, Patreon dot com slash Midas Touch for great pro-democracy content. Happy New Year's. Thank you all so much for supporting the network. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellis. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.